Banting diet was named after an obese William Banting who was prescribed a low-carb diet to lose weight by his doctor William Harvey back in 1869. Following a diet of bacon, fish, poultry, meat, vegetables, some fruit and a glass of sherry every night, he managed to shed his excess weight at the rate of one pound per week. So what I'd like to do is talk about uh, the Banting diet. So the Banting diet 2.0. So the original one was done by William Banting in 18 something? Yes, in London, yeah, in, London. in 1862. 1862. Yeah, you're very good with dates. <laughs> so look, I must show you one thing. I'm going to take my... I'm going to take my computer yeah. and show you something that no one else in Britain has ever seen. Right. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just walking to the door entrance to this building. And I'm going to show you a, a window. Mm -hmm. And behind me is a stained glass window, um, how we can see it. Yeah. That stained glass window, there's one of them. Yeah, you can see that. And there's the other one. Mm hmm Yep. And those yep. are around, this is our the Noakes Foundation building where we, we do our work from. Now, those two stained glass windows come from the Banting building in London. You wow. won't believe it. <laughs> yeah. When they when the company closed mm. in London, a South African was employed by, by them. Mm -hmm. And he he took the he was given those two stained glass windows and he brought them to South Africa. And then one day he wrote to me and he said, would you like them? And so I purchased them from him and we put them into the building. So that's the connection to Banton. <laughs> okay. that, is, that is excellent. Yes, yeah. because, and it's, it was really the doctor, Dr. Harvey, William Harvey, who mm. described the diet for him. But, but ban the Banting is the, the name that we remember. Right, because he, he wrote the pamphlet or whatever. But it's great yeah, that you have, you have those windows. Um, and of course, when he wrote the pamphlet, the Lancet said uh, you must not deal you're not a doctor you're not allowed mm -hmm. to tell patients what to do uh, so something's never changed. Changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yes um so, so the banting diet so is is because I, I looked at kind of a page on the banting diet it, it doesn't mention keto so is the banting diet a keto diet um you say it's low carb is the aim to get into ketosis yeah, you know, I think absolutely it's keto. You would be more ketotic if you eat the banting diet than if you eat a high carbohydrate diet. But then the mm. question is, what qualifies as keto? Mm. Do you, what level of ketones do you need to be called ketotic? Um, and that's that's an argument that I don't really go into. I mean, he prescribed a low carbohydrate diet. It wasn't an extremely low carbohydrate diet. And I, my view is that for most people, the banting diet's what you want. It's not extremely low carbohydrate. For people like myself with type 2 diabetes, you need to get the carbs as low as you possibly can and definitely below 25 grams a day. So that's, and that would be keto. That would be prescribed more as a keto diet. The reality is that individuals respond differently and that, that we, that the longer you're on the diet, probably the less ketotic you are. It's more difficult to become ketotic as you, as you adapt to the diet. So I don't, I don't use that. I just say low carbohydrate diets of different degrees of restriction. So 50 grams per day, 25 grams per day. That's, that's kind of the area that I look at. So 25 grams, I'd say that's a keto diet. 50, I'd say it's a low carbohydrate, probably not as keto, ketotic, ketogenic as you might want. Right. So, okay. And the, the diet has these kind of four stages that you... The, the, yeah, the observation, restoration, transformation, and preservation. So is, is the idea that you kind of walk through this path and then you end up preservation? Is Could you walk through kind of the stages? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting because Atkins was the, the next guy. Who pop, well, he wasn't the only because there were many steps between them, but Atkins is the remembered guy. Mm. And Atkins actually went low carbs and then he allowed you to increase your carbohydrate intake. And I don't think that's a good idea. Mm. So I would rather, if you're going to go key, go to a low-carb diet, you either go the whole hog immediately or you go to stages. And I think for most people, the stages is best. I mean, I'm eating much less carbohydrate than I did 10 years ago. It, took, it takes time to get to the, the low carbs that I'm eating. So I think that you start, most, most English, South Africans, people in Europe are eating 300 to 400 grams of carbs a day. That, that would be typical. 
And that is, that's way too much. That's 300 grams too much. But you, you wouldn't go from 400 grams to 25 grams in one day, or else you'll be in bed and feeling pretty sick. So I'd go 400, 350, 300, 250, 200, and keep going down, dropping by 50 grams every two weeks or three weeks. Uh, that's the one way. Otherwise, you go right down to 100 grams and you start at 100 grams and take it from there. The, the key, though, is you have to stop the sugar. You have to get off the sugar addiction. That's the key. So until you get off the sugar addiction, you, this is, the diet's not going to succeed that, because you will just fall back again. Right. And I think that, that what really interests me is in the laboratory studies of weight loss, no one has ever produced the levels of weight loss that we see every day in patients. You know, a guy phoned me, he lost 400 pounds from America, 400 pounds. Now, that's never reported in the scientific literature. And he only did it by getting rid of, he was, he, this is a really interesting point that no one's described until I asked him. I said, tell me about your hunger. He said, it was insatiable. I would eat a massive meal. And in half an hour, I'd be just as hungry as when I started the meal. And until people understand that hunger drives this thing, obesity, we can't sort it out. He's now lost his 400 pounds and is eating a relatively low number of calories a day how did he do it he did it by controlling his hunger and and we don't know understand the whole biology of what goes on but if you're going to continue to eat sugar and carbs you never get your hunger in under control and you can never be the weight that your body really needs to be right so when you say sugar you're talking uh, like simple sugars like sucrose glucose uh, fructose yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm mainly referring to sucrose, that's right, yeah. because that's so prevalent and you add it yeah. to your tea and coffee and so on. And that, that has to go. That, that has, has to go. go. And then you realize that there's lots of sugar in processed foods mm -hmm. and 80% of processed foods have sugar. So then you start looking for the sugar in the processed foods and then you get rid of the processed foods as well. Right. Yes. So th actually, that leads on to my next question. So within your within the banting diet how important is it to have organic food Do, is that an important thing you know that's a great question and the answer i think eric westman answers that one and he's been in this field longer than i have and he said if you're dealing with you know a, a person who hasn't got huge amounts of money the key is that you just get to get got to get them off the carbs and whatever food will get them off the carbs that we that's what you need so he's prepared to prescribe bully beef and other canned meats if that's what's required. If that's all the patient can afford, that's what you need to eat. And in a sense, that's what we do on our Eat Better South Africa campaign. Organic foods is fantastic. And obviously it's, help, it's healthy, but it's, the jump is going, getting off the carbs, getting off the sugar, getting off the processed food. And then, and then you're eating better. That's why our thing is eat better. It's not eat perfect, it's eat better. And once you get onto that diet, then if you can afford it, sure, then you go for pasture-raised animals that only eat grass, and that's fantastic. But it's, it's better to eat bad meat than bad carbs. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. Um, so what is kind of the macronutrient mix? Um, so we know carbs is like really low. So um, fat and protein, I guess, the ones that are left. Yeah, so, so I think that, you know, if you've got diabetes, it's got to, carbohydrates got to be 5% or less. Right. That's, that's the bottom line. So you've got 95% you have to fill up with. Mm -hmm. And this is where the problem arises. Because the question is, how much protein should you eat? Mm -hmm. and, and many of us, I think we eat too much fat and not enough protein. It's actually quite difficult on a banting diet to eat a lot of protein. Because you have to go and look for the leaner meats and the leaner mm -hmm. foods and be careful on dairy. And so, so we, it's much easier to eat fat than protein. So we tend to fill up, let's say 60% would be of, of fat and 30% of protein. Now, and that works for most people. And the key is what it does to your brain and your appetite. And as long as you're satiated, then, you must, then your diet's right. If you're satiated, losing weight, you're doing fine. Many women struggle because they go on this diet and they eat their 60% fat and they found that they put on fat. 
And they because that's because they're not eating enough protein and they need to increase the protein intake. And there are people in America who say you should increase your protein intake to 40%, even up to 50%. So that would be a high protein, high fat diet rather than a high fat, moderate protein diet. And I think these things are still being argued with. And, and because I've always promoted a high fat diet, the high fat diet worked for me. I clearly am satiated by fat rather than protein. I tend to be more biased towards the higher, higher fat diets. But I, I know many, many people, many women struggle and they, once they cut dairy and, and milk, obviously, and I know what they're doing, they're reducing their fat intake and they do much better. So, so if I, that's how I deal with patients who ask advice, I'd say you first eat the high fat diet. If it doesn't work, then you increase the protein and start reducing the fat. And many people find that that really helps them. But again, I think that's the, that's not the majority of people. Right. Okay, no, that's that's really good. So speaking of fat, how what are the healthy fats? And, and do you see saturated fat as being a, a problem or is it okay? <laughs> we go for the vintage fats, not the industrial fats. The vintage fats yeah. are what humans have always eaten. So we started eating saturated fat 4 million years ago and it made us what we are. And to, to vilify saturated fat was a massive disgrace. It's, it's completely wrong. There is no evidence. There is no evidence that cholesterol, as you are tested in your bloodstream, as you would be tested by your general practitioner, there's no evidence that that causes heart disease. Mm. It may be a marker of certain things, but it's not causal. Causal is diabetes. If you have arterial disease, you have diabetes. And it may not have been diagnosed, but that's because it wasn't proper, you weren't properly tested. Diabetes is the cause of arterial disease. Diabetes is the cause of heart disease. And the only reason you don't know that, I'm not saying you, but the public don't know that, is because we never talk about diabetic, diabetic heart disease, because that's what it is. So we're quite happy to say, oh, you've got nerve damage, so that we call that a diabetic neuropathy, or you've got kidney failure, we call that diabetic renal failure. But we never say, diabetic, you have diabetic heart disease. Never. Mm. And that's the real question. Why not? Because that, if we said that, we'd get the message across. So the key in, is that insulin resistance is the disaster. So people who like me fat and easily, we tend to be insulin resistant. And it's the insulin resistance that kills us from diabetes in the long term. It's not saturated fat. Saturated fat, if anything, protects us. And because it keeps your brain functioning. It keeps all the organs properly working because you need saturated fat to, to, to be healthy. You do not need glucose and you do need not need excessive insulin in the bloodstream. That's what you don't need. And the only way you get your glucose down and your insulin down is by eating more fat in the diet. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.